Welcome to Heath Rouse Barbecue. Today on Shooting the Q, we're gonna be knocking out beef tenderloin on the gateway drum with roll oak charcoal. Let's get started. For this beef tenderloin, I called my good buddy up Brad at the butcher block in South Haven, Mississippi. He went ahead and trimmed me up a beautiful three and a half to four pound tenderloin here. I think it weighs right at four pounds. You can see it's already trimmed up. He cut it off on ends, kept me the center cut. This is where you're gonna get your good center cut fillets from that you order or buy from a butcher store or anywhere like that. So I just kept it whole, this whole beef tenderloin, and I'm gonna keep it simple today, all right? I'm gonna use a little bit of olive oil, some of my beef rub and some garlic butter rub, and some salt and cracked black pepper, that's it. So I wanna get started here. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of olive oil on the beef tenderloin and get it coated. Make sure you get it coated real well so the rub will stick to it real well. Now, ends too. Now, once I get that going, I'm gonna go ahead and take my garlic butter rub and start seasoning. And I'm just gonna season all sides with it. Now, this has got butter buds in it. It's got three types of garlic in it. It's got salt, pepper, onion powder, it's a really good, versatile rub. You can use it on meats, vegetables, fish, seafood, chicken, everything. It works wonders. It's great on roasted broccoli, by the way. Now, then I'm gonna come back with my beef rub. It's a little bit finer coarse. That's why I'm gonna use some sea salt and cracked black pepper. Now, I'm gonna pat it in. You can see I'm not getting crazy with it. I still wanna be able to taste the beef here. But I want a good peppery note. I'm just gonna kinda of roll it in the season here on the board. Now, once I get that done, I'm gonna go ahead, take some salt here, take some fresh cracked black pepper. Now, I'm not using a ton of salt here, just a little bit. Now, once you get that rolled in, I'm gonna come back with some good fresh cracked black pepper here. I love a good peppery note on a beef tenderloin. Now, we're gonna be serving this today with a creamy horseradish sauce. Now, once I get that, all the cracked black pepper on it, get everything seasoned up, I'm gonna let that hang out on my cutting board here for about 20 minutes while my gateway drum comes to 10. First thing I want to do that my drum's got a good coal bed in it is go ahead and drop one piece of pecan wood in it here. I'm going to go ahead and put my rack in and go ahead and get my lid on. Now I'm going to run this top vent all the way open here. I'm going to keep these open till my drum starts coming to temp and I'm going to close them down about a quarter inch on each side where it should settle in around 275 or 300 degrees. All right, now that our gateway drum has been up to temp, between 275 and 300 degrees is where we're gonna run it up at here. So I'm gonna go ahead, get my lid off, get my beef tenderloin on and get a probe in it. And what I wanna do is, I wanna kinda squish it up just a little bit. You can see how it kinda forms up the end that narrowed down just a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and get a chef's alarm in here. I've got it set to 125 degrees. I want to go in the thickest part of this right here. All right, and get that grill lid shut because you can see the fire is coming on up. All right, now we're 30 minutes in on our beef tenderloin. You can see our grill's running a little over 300 degrees. I went ahead and knocked my vents back. The wind out here is pretty rough today. I'm gonna go ahead and get in here and check it with a probe and I'm gonna roll it over. Checking it with my probe here. I'm at about 93 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take my hand here and roll it over. So, and let it keep going. All right, our beef tenderloin has been on the grill about an hour and 40 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and check it. I believe it's right where it needs to be. I'm gonna go ahead and get it in here. It's hitting 125 degrees there. 126 in one part. Yep, I'm gonna go ahead and plate it and get it off and let it rest. 
Now, once we've got our tenderloin off the grill here on a platter, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna loosely cover this with foil. Kinda let it vent on the edges here. Kinda go around. Still leave a little, not wrap it real tight. I'm gonna let it rest for about 15 minutes before we slice into it. That's gonna give it enough time for the juices to kinda absorb back into it. It's gonna be a nice medium rare to medium inside and we're gonna serve it with a creamy horseradish sauce. It's gonna be good. Now that our beef tenderloin is off the grill, we've let it rest for about 15 minutes on this platter here. Now, just to recap what I've done, I took a whole four pound beef tenderloin I got from my friend Brad at the Butcher Block in South Haven, Mississippi. I seasoned it with my garlic butter rub, some beef rub, some fresh salt, and some cracked black pepper that I had. I put it on my gateway drum, cooked it between 275 to really 300, 320, it got up 320 once. Rolled it after about 30 minutes and kept rolling it in 30 minute increments. It finished off after about an hour and 40 minutes. We pulled and let it rest and this is what we have. So I'm gonna go ahead, take it off my platter, get it on the cutting board. You can see we have a little bit of juice here left on the platter. You don't wanna throw that away, you wanna save it. Now, I'm gonna go ahead, let's go ahead and get it cut in the middle. We're looking for a perfect medium rare is what we're looking for in the middle. It's gonna be a little more medium out to the ends is where it's gonna be. And I imagine where it tapers down here, it's probably gonna be a little more medium well. This end should be more medium, but in the middle, it's gonna be a good medium rare. Oh yeah. That right there is pure awesomeness. Now, once we've got our beef tenderloin sliced in half, you can go ahead, and like I said, there's gonna be some people that want more medium, you can go toward the ends. You can slice this as thick or as thin as you want. It's up to you and how many guests you're serving. I'm gonna slice mine semi-thin here, just because that's the way I like it. You can see that beef tenderloin's a nice medium rare. As it sets out here, you'll see more and more color on it. Now, let's get this fan back here where you can see it. Look at how the moisture in that beef tenderloin and that good medium rare in that right there. That's what we're looking for. Look at all the juices flowing in it. Gateway drum and that roll oak charcoal done its job today. The beef rub, is gonna have a nice peppery note. So let's go ahead and slice a few more slices off this end right here. Now that we've got our beef tenderloin sliced and laid out here, you can see that it looks phenomenal, perfect medium rare. I'm gonna go ahead, I've made up a creamy horseradish here. I'll put the recipe down below. It's a cup of sour cream, a tablespoon of fresh squeezed lemon juice, a quarter cup of mayo, about a third a cup of prepared horseradish or more if you like it spicy, and some everyday rub to taste. You can also add in some optional ingredients here if you want to. It's kind of up to you. I like it like it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna scoop a little bit out here on my cutting board. Now, just to show you this filet right here, how tender it is off of here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut it with a fork. There's no need to cut it with a knife. The nice peppery note that this crust has here, I'm gonna get in here. I'm done, walk away. That's completely incredible. The peppery note it picks up, the creaminess from the horseradish, the flavor from the roll oak charcoal and the pecan wood we used on the gateway drum, everything, all the fat and stuff rendered in this, dropping on the fire, made it absolutely incredible. I've gotta have one more bite, I'm going back in here for that. Now you know it's cooked right when you can take and you can cut it with a fork like this right here. I can get a little bit of that horseradish cream on there. That's unstoppable, I can't wait to eat this meal. Remember, if you like what we're doing on our channel, be sure to like, subscribe, share it with your friends. We're gonna be putting out weekly recipes and videos every week.